our two donkeys enjoy their lives here. Nice company, plenty of food. Eeyore is only young, but sometimes I wonder about Nell, who, according to her passport, is 15 years old. What jobs has she done in her former life? Whenever she gets given a job, she seems to quite like it. So I decided that I want to be able to involve uh. Nell more in our farm jobs. She'd be great for carrying things. I asked our friend Martin, who is a basket maker, to make two panniers for Nell. Here's one he's made already. I join him to watch how he makes the second one. Martin has a small basketry workshop and sells his handmade products on the local market. His baskets come in all shapes and sizes. He makes them out of willow. The willow is usually cut in winter when the sap is down and the cut willow dries out a bit more until he uses it. Well, you can use them fresh, but you get so much shrinkage on them. Yeah, okay. That the baskets then become very loose. I see, yeah. And obviously when you soak yeah. them, they do swell up a bit, but not as much as they would do if they had all the, all the sap in them. So these then, were soaked for, what, 10 well, days? It, it, on average, it's a day a foot. You know, so if we've got eight foot willows, we soak them for eight days. It needs to be soaked again before starting to weave it, or it splits and cracks. Yeah, okay. Which will now way. bend. Yeah. But if I don't soak it long enough, it will still crack. If I under soak it, or if I over soak it, I then lose the bark on it, like, you know, so it's a, there's a fine art to soaking. Yeah. So what are you doing here now okay, with those we'll sacks? Okay, we've got on them just yeah. because we've got the sun coming in on them and we don't want them to dry out anymore. Yeah. So this is the frame, okay? This is a, a frame for making creels. Mm -hmm. There's different sizes in here. There's the, the, oh, the yeah. standard creel, which yeah. is the big creel that they would have used on donkeys and horses years ago. Martin uses a frame to help him get the dimensions right. Okay, so you stick them in, two stick willow in. and one hazel. He uses stronger rods for the corners. Three in each corner, two are willow and one is hazel. Yeah. Hazel's not as flexible as willow, but it will, it will bend, but you have to twist it a lot. So mm. that's why I'm only using it for, for the corners, <coughs> so we don't have to bend it. Those are the four, now corners. We're done with four corners. Okay, and what's next then? This is a Galway creel, as made in Galway. <laughs> Some of them had roundy bottoms to them, others of them had um, what they call um, hinged flat bottoms, yeah. pardogues. There are lots of different types of panniers or creels, as they are also called. So now there's three sticks in each corner, and there's two sticks down each side, like you know. Well, these these are made upside down, so. When you look at this basket here, the way yeah. we're weaving it, we're weaving it like this. Yeah. The top weave holds the rest of the basket together, so it has to be done well. So the next weave, which is the locking weave, mm -hmm. which is the top one on the, on the basket there, it's called a bunya bale, which means a mouth whale. What this weave actually does, it goes one way round and then all these rods then get worked the opposite way. So the, all these sticks might look the same size, but in reality there's big ones, middling ones and small ones. And these ones from underneath are now coming up and over and that's what locks it. This is called a wrapping iron. Show me. He uses a wrapping iron to get the weave tight. He then ties the top ends of the upright willow and hazel together. This will help shape the basket. To start the next course, I double up. So Mm -hmm. 
So there's my doubles there. So mm -hmm. I take the bottom one from the first pair, and then the bottom one from the second pair. And then I'm then I've got one rod for each segment again. Hand woven baskets look so beautifully simple, but weaving is quite a complicated skill. And there are many different patterns of weave depending on the job they have to do. So we cram in an extra rod now. Anything where you stick things in is called cramming. For the next step, Martin crams in more uprights. These are bent over to form a gap in the sides of the basket. You just sort of leave them sticking, sticking up at an angle of about whatever that is. We filmed this earlier in summer. It's a different season now already. The weave continues until the basket is big enough. But I've been rain stop play. Yes. Suddenly it's raining and we go into the workshop where Martin starts to work on the bottom. This is a bodkin. At the what? A bodkin. Bodkin. Basket maker's bodkin. Uh, it's a, bodkin. Point, a pointy yoke. This bodkin is an essential tool for this stage as it turns out. He pushes the bodkin through the weave to make a gap for the willow stick. Nasty ah. cracking noises. Mm. I'll stab it in the middle, and that that will make it hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Easier. By pushing the point of the bodkin into the uprights, Martin can bend them over without them splitting. Oh, Them. See here, I'm going to weave in uh, these ones across. You see these ones going across now. These are the ones. These are the ones I'm knocking down at the minute underneath. Yeah. yeah? I'm having to go over two sets and under one set. We're going to now weave these across here to yeah. form the base. So we have to rope them up. We have to make them into a sort of a rope, and we do that by twisting them, by winding them up. And you hear it crack in a minute. Yeah. You hear it crack? Yeah. Yeah. Can you see that there? Yes. Let's split. Yeah. yeah. So we follow, we keep winding now. Right, and at this point now, they can do anything. They're very flexible now, look. Yeah, so you just break the fibers break along. The fibers. Yeah. The uprights on the other two sides get twisted around themselves until the fiber cracks. This way, they become more bendy and can be woven through the first layer. All in all, it takes Martin about four hours to weave a creel. I do the roping thing and then bring them underneath the whale and then finish them back out that way. I just take them wherever they go. But. Thanks, Martin. What a craftsman. My new donkey panniers. Beautiful. Now I need a straddle to tie them onto Nell. Better have a chat with Tim.